Actually, Allah has so many names and attributes that describe him, like the merciful, the forgiving. But why do Muslims use more frequently the word Allah more than any other word? It's because you can have a merciful son and a forgiving wife. But when a Muslim wants to communicate with another person and he wants him to understand that he needs God, then he needs to say Allah, the one and only God. The All-Merciful, the Beneficent, the Savior, the Knower of all, the Hearer of all, and the Seer of all, the Judge and the Just, the All-Aware, the Magnificent, the Forgiver, the Highest, the Greatest, the Preserver, the Mighty, the Generous One, the Watchful One, the responder to prayer, the perfectly wise, the loving one, the majestic one, the resurrector, the truth, the possessor of all strength, the ever-living one, and the self-existing one, the all-powerful, the supreme one, the patient one, and the guide to repentance. What is the purpose of life? Is it to enjoy the pleasures of this world? To eat and drink and reproduce? The purpose of life is one of the most fundamental questions, but still most people are unable to answer. If we meet someone in a hotel and ask him, what is the purpose of your existence in this hotel? He should give us an answer. He may say, well, I am here because I have a booking or I came to meet some people who are staying in this hotel or I came to eat in a restaurant. But if he says, huh, I don't know what I'm doing here, then this person is probably lost and he needs guidance. What if we ask ourselves, what are we doing here on planet Earth? Those who don't know the answer those who do not know the purpose of their life need guidance Allah said in the Quran I have not created the jinn and humankind except that they should worship me if we think about all the gifts given to us our eyes how can we thank the Creator for the gift of vision our ears how can we thank him for the gift of hearing did we ever think about our kidneys and the hundreds of simultaneous chemical operations that happen in them to purify our bodies from fatal toxins did we ever think about our brains and the amount of information that it is acquiring and retrieving in no time did we ever think about our hearts that keep on beating non-stop for a lifetime. Add to them the gifts of having children and wealth and so many more bounties. The Quran challenges man to count the bounties of Allah which are infinite and uncountable. And he gives you of all that you ask him and if you count Allah's favors you will not be able to number them. Surely man is very unjust very ungrateful. Allah is the one worthy of all thanks, all praise, and all worship. The purpose of life is to submit and be in a continuous state of worship. Some people may think, come on, give me a break. How can I worship continuously? I need some time to sleep. I need some time to eat. I need some time to work and make some money. And explaining this leads us to talk about the concept of worship in Islam because it's different from the concept of worship in any other religion. In any religion, to worship is to pray, fast. These are called rituals, a very small part of the worship in Islam. In Islam, to worship is to do anything that is lawful with good intentions. Which means that sleeping can be considered worship in Islam if it's done with good intentions. And this is crystal clear in the Quran when Allah described those who pray voluntarily and stand the night in adoration. He said, they used to sleep but little 
in the night. But actually, we pray when we are awake. I could have understood it like that. They used to stay awake for a long time at night. But no, Allah didn't say so. Allah said it like that. They used to sleep but little in the night. Because like that, the verse is mentioning the two types of worship. Praying voluntarily, which is understood from the meaning, and sleeping with an intention to wake up early and pray. So their sleeping were considered a worship. Another very amazing saying for Prophet Muhammad is what he said to the companions. He said that one of you gets rewarded as if he is spending in charity when he is practicing sexual relationship with his wife. And they said, what? Can one of us be rewarded for fulfilling his desire with his wife? He said, why are you surprised? Don't you think that when he does it unlawfully, which means by cheating on his spouse, he can be punished for that? They said, sure. He said, why are you surprised then that if he does it lawfully to please his wife and please himself, fulfill their own desires and stay away from illegal relationships, this can be also rewardable by Allah. And this means that any lawful action can be a worship in Islam if it's done with good intentions. This means that the purpose of life in Islam is always to do the good work with good intentions, which means to be always in a continuous state of self-development. Muslims believe in the existence of angels. Angels are created from light. They will not be held accountable as they do not have free choice. Each angel is assigned to do a specific task. Some of them record our deeds, and some of them protect human beings. The archangel Gabriel is responsible for carrying the messages of God to the messengers. Muslims believe in all the books of Allah, like the scriptures of Abraham, the Psalms of David, the Torah that was given to Moses, the Gospel or the Injil that was given to Jesus Christ, and the Quran which was given to Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon them all. The Quran stressed on this belief and mentioned the Torah as a source of guidance and light. Surely we did send down the Torah to Moses. Therein was guidance and light by which the prophets who submitted themselves to Allah's will judged the Jews. The gospel was mentioned also in the Quran as a source of guidance and light. We sent Jesus, son of Mary, confirming the Torah that had come before him, and we gave him the gospel in which was guidance and light and confirmation of the Torah. Muslims believe that the archangel Gabriel carried the books of God 100% correct to the messengers of God. وَقَالَ مُوسَىٰ يَا قَوْمِ إِن كُنْتُمْ آمَنْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ فَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلُوا فَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُسْلِمِينَ Muslims believe in the original scriptures, the purely divine books that have been revealed to the messengers of Allah in its original text. But when man starts translating them, then a human contribution is added to them which is not divine. So the translations cannot be considered divine. Which means that if a person told you, let me give you an English Quran, correct him, tell him there is nothing as so-called English Quran. Say an English translation for the Quran. The Quran is only the Arabic text. And of course this applies for all other scriptures. The original scripture is the one in its original text without translation. So translations cannot be considered divine. <laughs> 